Hello, this is Alexei Sipachevsky. I am an expert in table tennis and equipment for it. Today we are reviewing the medium pips called 612 from the company Giant Dragon. This rubber is not new in our store, it's been around for many years, but it plays well. Now I decided to test it with plastic balls and share useful nuances and details, and what makes it so powerful. Let's start with the superpower. Although my short test may not have revealed all the superpowers. Perhaps you know other superpowers. If you are familiar with this rubber, love it, and play with it, write in the comments what other superpowers it has. I have identified a superpower such as extremely strong chop in defense. I remind you, these are medium pips, and an extremely strong chop in defense is not necessary for medium pips at all. But in this case, that's exactly how it is. What characterizes the chop from 612? Firstly, it is characterized by a very powerful reverse spin. Secondly, a very low and descending trajectory of the ball after the bounce. A powerful reverse and a very low descending trajectory, this is an extremely unpleasant thing for someone attacking this ball. In principle, even to push back such a chop is quite difficult. You still need to play very carefully. Of course, it should be noted that the very strong chop works against a good topspin with spin. Since the pips are weakly spinning, there will be no strong backspin against flat balls, although a low, descending trajectory is achieved even when returning a flat attack. We specifically checked this. I hit with a flat shot, my partner returned it from a distant zone with a chop or something similar to a chop. A very low, descending ball without spin was returned. And thanks to the fact that the pips are very slow, control in the chop is also very high. My partner, unaccustomed to this rubber, made quite a few mistakes, but solely because he was used to a different type of rubber. If you are used to playing with this pips, then there will be a very high percentage of reliability in the return. The basic properties of 612 are as follows. These are medium pips, very slow. Perhaps not the slowest ones you can find. Accordingly, they are quite controllable and at the same time they have weak grip. That is, you can give very little of your own spin, and even then if you try very hard. But there is no point in getting carried away with this. This rubber is not for that. In general, weak grip, low speed, and very high control. The look of this rubber is quite unusual. Looking at it, most people probably think it's short pips, not medium ones. But the type of rubber is determined not by the size of the pips, but by the proportion of length to width. And in proportion, this is a medium pip. Although the pips are large and look like short ones. Playing a block on the table. The control with the block is very high, and the return has an unpleasant trajectory of flight. The ball goes low and fast, but there is almost no reverse. With a regular passive block, the ball returns almost flat. So the opponent may have a bit of a brain break over the question of whether these pimples give reverse or not. When cutting against a topspin, the reverse is extremely malicious, but with a passive block at the table, the reverse is absent. So, for a passive block on the table with high control, this rubber will be a good fit. But not for fast blocks and not for aggressive shots, as the rubber is slow and, moreover, viscous. What does viscous mean? Explaining this aspect, I will move on to the next element, the attack. Viscosity manifests itself, for example, in the fact that if, when attacking with a counter drive or a hit, there is too long a contact with the ball, then the ball on the rubber will somehow stick, and this will not work very effectively. My partner is used to attacking in this way, he drags the ball along the rubber for quite a long time. And it turned out that this method did not work well with this rubber. His attacks were only successful when they were slow, and the fast ones went all over the place. Then we exchanged rackets, I tried another method of attack with the shortest possible contact with the ball. And it turned out that such a snap on convenient balls works well. You can even make fast hits if you don't prolong the contact with the ball. When you see a high ball, you need to sharply and shortly hit it, and then a fast and controlled strike follows. I emphasize once again, it is important to make a sharp snap, 
not to drag the racket over the ball via counter drive. When it comes to pushing on the table, it should be noted that if done correctly, it is very controllable and effective. The correct way in this case is not to try to give backspin. The rubber is not very grippy, and high control in the game of table pushing is maintained by simply directing the ball to the desired point. Whether it's low or fast, it depends on the situation. In general, do not focus on spin when pushing, just guide the ball where you need it. Then everything will be fine with pushing. If you try to heavily chop ball, a strong backspin will not be achieved anyway. And the chances of making a mistake increase. In summary, the rubber is very slow, very controllable, with weak grip, good passive blocking, and fierce defensive chopping. The attacking opportunities are not brilliant, but quite normal. You can confidently attack from comfortable high balls. The rubber is suitable even for beginners, as it is slow, controllable, and understandable. As for using it as a defensive rubber, it is probably better to use it on the left, as it is more convenient to hit comfortably without a swing with high balls on the left. Also, on the left, more control is often needed and less speed, especially for defensive chopping. But it can also be used on the right. This was Alexei Sipachevsky. If you need short pimples or any other equipment for table tennis, contact our store. We will be happy to help you. Contact us with any questions, including equipment selection.